G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be looking at the Debian 10.6 XFCE. This distro was requested or put forward by Esnix um, and he'd given me the link to Debian 10.6 XFCE. There's uh, no particular website for Debian, well there's a website for Debian but for, for the 10.6 XFCE it's... Um, it's in the website somewhere. <laughs> Sometimes can be difficult to um, fish these things out of the Debian website, uh, but I'll provide the link for you if you're interested in that. Debian 10.6, uh, Esnix gave me this one. But let's go with the Debian 10.6 XFCE desktop at 728 megabytes. Um, this is the one I downloaded. It's uh, 695, so they're always a bit different when you, whatever they say, as opposed to what you download. And let's start the Debian 10.6 XFCE. Graphical install, um, advanced options, we got live. No, we don't. So we're just going to do the graphical install. English, um, select your location, Australia, uh, be American English, uh, configure the network, host name, Debian will do. Configure the network, uh, continue, don't need to do anything there. Set up users and passwords, root password, tab, tab to continue, the real name, username, that'll do me, with password, Tab button again to highlight continue. Western Australia. Let's use the entire disk. That one there. All files in one partition, yes. Let's do that. Continue that. So it's created a primary and a swap. Yep. Uh, finish partitioning. Tab to continue. Yep. Uh, continue the following changes. Uh, tab to yes. Finish that. Um, let's use the mouse and check yes and continue. Installing the system. Use a network mirror, let's say yes in for this example, Australia. Debian.org should be up should be fine. Uh, let's just continue that. So this is an a uh, bit of an unknown area as well, because I don't know if it's it's obviously downloading the apt packages and all that. Shouldn't be too much. I doubt whether it's downloading a huge amount of stuff. I would have thought it's installing most things off the ISO. Somebody can probably um, comment on that and let me know whether that's the case that would be handy popularity contest no I'm not interested in that on a virtual box okay so we've got XFC already highlighted desktop environment so that's all done printer server so what I've done is I've repeated the install on another VirtualBox. This VirtualBox was set up with no Wi-Fi. So what you can see here is the software selection is a lot less than what was available in the Wi-Fi selection. So what it does is I don't think it's grabbing anything. It's grabbing information, but it's not really downloading any software from what I can see. The installation was fine. The VirtualBox is still set up with no Wi-Fi. 
Now, as you can see, there's no Wi-Fi here. Now, I cannot change the display. Um, for some reason, the display is not coming up at all, as you can see there. It just crashes straight away. Don't know what the reason for that is. So, as you can see, we're disconnected. So, you'll probably see that everything that's in here, accessories and graphics, should be the same as what is on the install with with the Wi-Fi attached so there's not much difference there at all just thought I would uh, experiment with that just to make sure that we are grabbing everything from the seed from the ISO itself and nothing from the internet which appears to be what's happening here yep all right so let's continue with that that should be installing from the ISO I would believe and that's pretty fast so I'd have to think it's from the ISO not from the net. Install the Grub bootloader on hard disk, yes. SDA. And that is the installation complete. Let's continue that. Let's log in. Use default, I believe, should be okay. Let's go to settings, settings manager, display, and 1920 by 1080. Apply that, it's all good, close that, and that's our Debian install complete. Now I believe that didn't use any internet, I believe that was com completed off the ISO only. I would hope someone can uh, verify that for me, but I'm pretty sure if you got no internet access it would run and install anyway I'm pretty sure. I'm sure I've done that before. So we have a terminal file manager, obviously the Thuna file manager. Yep, let's close that. Accessories, mouse pad, notes, task manager, education, LibreOffice Math, LibreOffice Draw and Graphics, Restretto Image Viewer. Internet, Firefox Extended Support Release, Multimedia, Xfelso, what is that? Oh no, I think it's an audio player. Oh, that uh, um, changes the audio tags, I believe. Parole Media Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control, Quad Labet is an audio player. Uh, not now. Yep. Okay, it's an audio player. And XF Burn Office. Got a full Libre Office there. And the system, you got your XFCE system stuff there with Synaptic Package Manager. So um, that's the same as everything else. It's based on Debian. Packages will probably be a little bit older if you're okay with that being based on Debian although they should be um, compared to T Ubuntu 2004 they'll be a bit older but they should still be recently current anyway now that's got quite a few good applications in it so you wouldn't uh, depending upon what you're doing you wouldn't really have to install much more on this except for any applications that you need that's not in there I'm not sure what what other people are doing with their systems whether they they are doing any uh, video editing or anything like that or just using it just to browse and do general stuff should be this one probably this one is the best so far i would have to think besides antics maybe so this one here is very complete and being based on Debian, there's no surprises there, but uh, quite a complete distro. 
so you could be pretty happy with that one and I'm pretty sure there was not much internet used on that install whatsoever one thing I noticed is it doesn't have a um, an email client mail reader there's no application there so it doesn't look like it has an email client so we'll have a quick look at um, office here uh, let's go to office and check out what office version we are running in Debian 10.6.0 help and about 6.1.5.2 so that seems to be sort of roughly a version that a lot of these um, lightweight distros are running and let's just check out the task manager task manager there memory is on 8% CPU 2% let's just quickly install htop and check that out Oh, I'm not part of the sudo was file. I'm going to be reported. <laughs> uh, we'll just try root su. I think it is. Um, apt install htop. Let's clear that and have a look at htop. So we are running 305 megabytes of memory. I've got four gigabytes of swap. And the CPUs are fairly quiet. Pretty low on resources there, I must say, 305. Um, I don't think you'll ever get down as far as what Buster Dog was, or maybe Antics was pretty low as well, I think, if I remember rightly. So in the internet, there's no, uh, we've only got Firefox extended support release. I think we got everything here except for probably a email client. Now, bearing in mind that we downloaded this at 768 megabytes, I think it was. It was 728 megabytes we downloaded the ISO with. So if we went to, let's see, uh, Synaptic Package Manager. Let's do a search for Thunderbird and just see how much that is to install let's mark for installation apply and let's see what it says 48 megabytes so even if you install you can you can do your email clients online if you wanted to it's not a problem but if you want an email client pretty much I would have to think that Thunderbird's probably one of the most commonly used email clients within Linux uh, it's under 50 megabytes anyway, so 778, 780 maybe. So you're still under 800 megabytes installing an email client. And you've pretty much got what you need. Ristretto Image Viewer. Let's have a look at that. Help and about. Ristretto is an image viewer, so we've got that there. No problem. Parole Media Player. Help and about. 1.01, 1.0.1, quad libet, help and about 4.2.1. Haven't really used that before. It looks, it's got a fairly simple interface and looks quite nice, actually, I must say, quad libet. Looks very simple to use. Full LibreOffice with a document viewer. So nothing extraordinary for Debian 10.6, but the bare minimum to get you started, no doubt about that. And um, that's quite a usable desktop indeed. So you still got a little bit of wiggle room there for installing any more lighter applications that you may need. So that was Debian 10.6 XFCE. Quite a complete desktop, really. Downloaded at 728 8 megabytes still have that little bit of room to install any other applications needed as long as they're not too heavy applications should be fine 
I'm not really sure what the user will be wanting to install or what the user even needs. Um, but if you're looking at the simple things needed on a desktop to do general everyday tasks, then this, this one here has got to be, you'd have to think is complete for that. It's got an audio player, an image viewer, a media player, office suite and a text editor. So that to me would say that they're the, the basic things that you would need to be doing everyday tasks on, on a computer. So, so far, um, looking at um, Debian Antics, possibly Buster Dog you could probably throw in there as well. Um, they're all looking quite good contenders at the moment for the lightweight distros for under 900 megabytes. So that was Debian 10.6 XFCE. What did you think? I think it's quite a contender for sure. So that was Debian 10.6 XFCE. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.